All right, just want to do a video talking about the scriptural speaking in tongues versus the charismatic counterfeit tongues and show the, the difference between the two because there's a scriptural difference of what the Bible describes as the speaking in tongues, the gift of speaking in tongues, and what the charismatics do. So let's get right into the Holy Scriptures on this matter. Not our feelings and experiences, but what does the Word of God say? So first of all, scriptural tongues were known languages, not the demonic gibberish that the charismatics do. Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 11. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, I'm probably not saying that right, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So what we're, what we're speaking in tongues, known languages, earthly languages that were listed in verses uh, 6 down to verse 11. There was not this, this demonic gibberish this -la 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 that the charismatics do. That's not at all what speaking in tongues is. Uh, that's, a, that's a satanic counterfeit. Also, I want to point something out as well, else out as well. The unknown tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 to 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13 to 14 were not the gibberish either, because there had to be an interpreter present. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26 to 28. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26 to 28. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, and a doctrine, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most, at the most by three, and that by chorus let one and let one interpret. So there had to be an interpreter present. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse ten to eleven. First Corinthians twelve, verse ten to eleven. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all, all these, but all, but sorry, but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man uh, severely as he will. I'm not good at reading things on a computer, but we see there, there is an interpretation there when the tongues are being spoken, when there's unknown tongues. It, again, it was not this just sha la 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 you know, asha hama, this stuff that the charismatics do, basically. That's, that's essentially what they do. That's not, that's, not, that's not speaking in tongues. That's called devil possession. Next point is that scriptural tongues were a sign for unbelieving Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20 to 22. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 20 to 22. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, be in understanding, be, but in understanding be, be men. Sorry, In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips uh, will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that they will not, that, that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe, but for them which believe. Story with them, but believe not, but for them which believe. Again, not good at reading things on a computer. Also, I haven't done a study like this in a while, so I'm a bit rusty if I haven't, if I get back to it after a hiatus of it. So just bear with me. But the bottom line is, is that tongues, they're not for those who believe, but for those who believe not. Now, what does it say here when it says, in the law it is written? What's it referring back to? Well, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. It's referring back to a prophecy. These tongues were a fulfillment of the prophecy. That was regarding about that was basically regarding Israel. First, uh, sorry, Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, verse eleven to twelve. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, "This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing." Yet they would not hear. Okay, that's what Paul's referring to in that verse. There is Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, verse eleven to twelve. Uh, every time tongues were spoken in the book of Acts, there were always unbelieving Jews that were present. Okay, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 11, Acts chapter 10, verse 46, sorry, 44 to 46, and Acts chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. There were unbelieving Jews that are present when tongues were being spoken. Next point, uh, point number three, is that scriptural speaking in tongues 
uh, were not spoken by every born-again saint, even back in the days of the apostles in the first century. Not every believer spoke in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man uh, to profit withal. For to one is given the, by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, like we read earlier. So we see here that their gifts were divided up. It was not, not every believer spoke in tongues. So if tongues are the sign of your salvation, and also I'll point this out as well, this is not in my notes, but uh, Jesus Christ never spoke in tongues. So if speaking in tongues is a sign of the Holy Ghost, I guess Jesus Christ didn't have the Holy Ghost then because he never spoke in tongues in, the, in any of the four Gospels. And I know I thought charismatic will well, they'll say, oh, we don't believe that. That's what that's what you get down to if you're going to be consistent with their theology of tongues being the sign, the proof of the Holy Ghost in you. It's a false theology. It's a false doctrine. This charismatic movement is a false religion. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 to 30. says, For God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? A rhetorical question obviously the answer is no that's the bottom line right there and also another point i want to make out as well uh the jews who believed in acts chapter 4 verse 4 and acts chapter 6 verse 7 did not speak in tongues the ethiopian eunuch who was saved in acts chapter 8 verse 35 to 39 as well as the first people who were saved in antioch in acts chapter 11 verse 20 to 21 also did not speak in tongues and some other examples of saved people who didn't speak in tongues uh lydia and, and her household who got saved in Acts chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. The Philippian jailer and his family, who got saved in Acts chapter 16, verse 30 to 33. Those who got saved in Thessalonica and Berea and Athens in Acts chapter 17, verse 4, Acts chapter 17, verse 12, and Acts chapter 17, verse 34. They, they didn't speak in tongues either. Uh, Crispius and others who got saved in Corinth uh, in Acts chapter 18, verse 8, and those who believed in Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, verse 17 to 19. Those guys didn't speak in tongues either. So if tongues were the evidence of, of the Holy Ghost, these people have never spoken tongues. So what do you do with that? You can't because tongues is not the sign of the Holy Ghost. You know, it, it's a gift, but, you know, if, and I'll put it this way, because it's no languages. If you can speak another language, you can speak in tongues, but the gift of speaking in tongues is a whole, a whole other thing there, but I'm not going to get too much into that. But the bottom line is, is that, and, and this goes into my fourth point, the gifts of tongues would cease once the word of God was complete and the final revelation was given. Okay? The need for those spiritual gifts is no longer here. Why? Because we have the complete word of God. We don't need anything else. We don't need gifts. We don't need signs and wonders. We don't need prophecies or, prophecies or anything else outside of the word of God. I'll put it that way because there are prophecies in scripture. But all we need is in the, everything we need for faith and practice is in the holy, holy word of God, the written scriptures. And here's a proof on that. And we're going to compare two verses here. Uh, so like I said, the gifts of tongues would cease once the word of God was complete and the final revelation was given. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. Controversial scripture regarding this matter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What is it referring to there? What's, what is that... What does it say that which is perfect? What is it referring to? Well, when it says that which is perfect, it's referring to the written word of God. And that which is perfect came after the final revelation of scripture was given and the canon was sealed and closed in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19. And this is a verse that shows that this charismatic movement is a curse. It's, it's a curse of God. That simple. Uh, revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19. Here's why this charismatic movement is cursed. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So when these charismatics give these extra biblical revelations and and 
you know, contradict the scriptures and add to what is already contained in the scriptures, uh, they're bringing God's judgment upon them. That's why I say this charismatic movement is cursed, and that's why I go so hard against it, because they are adding to the word of God. We don't need anything but the Bible. Okay, that, that may cause some controversy of me saying that, but 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10 shows that which is perfect, the word of God. Once it's come, we, the, the need for signs and wonders is no longer there. Everything we need is in the word of God. And uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 21 shows that the word of God is our more sure word of prophecy, even more so than voices and visions from heaven. So that verse, that passage there destroys the whole charismatic movement. So I wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived when these charismatics speak in tongues. They are indeed speaking in tongues, but it's not the scriptural speaking in tongues, which were known languages. It's demonic possession. Plain and simple. This charismatic movement is full of devil spirits. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.